to another TechMinds video. So you may have seen some of my previous videos where I showed you some useful projects that you can do with the TT Go LoRa boards, such as Mestastic and also LoRa APRS. Another cool project to look at is called Tiny GS or Tiny Ground Station. Now what this project enables you to do is receive LoRa packets from specialist LoRa satellites that are orbiting the globe. Now these satellites are not put there by big companies, but more so students at universities and smaller companies that are looking to learn from satellite deployment. Now these satellites are classed as LEO satellites or low earth orbit. Now with them being in low earth orbit, we can get away with using very little RF power. So the LoRa modulation technique is designed for such projects as it is based on spread spectrum. Upon visiting the tiny GS website, you'll see a world map with satellite ground stations, now shown here as green satellite icons. All of these are currently receiving LoRa packets from satellites and are online to send those packets to the tiny GS website. Setting up a ground station is extremely easy and I'll show you how to do it shortly. So what satellites can we receive data from? Well, on TinyGS website, they detail exactly which satellites are actively transmitting. Now, most of these satellites are on the 70 centimeter handband, roughly between 430 and 440 megahertz. So it's important to have the correct LoRa board for these satellites. Now, some satellites do actually transmit on 868-915-911 or 2.4 gigahertz, but you can check the status of them on this page. Now from the list of satellites on the TinyGS website, you're able to click on them to see further information about that specific project. What's also nice is that you can see actual photos of the actual satellite which was launched. Now these are not your typical commercial size satellites. Nope, they are literally cubes with some measuring just 10 by 10 centimeters. With the miniaturization of single board computers and LoRa transceivers, this makes it relatively easy to launch a satellite into low Earth orbit, albeit it does actually still cost some money. Once you've got your own ground station connected and working, you'll be able to view your own dashboard. Now this will show information on which satellites your ground station has received. You'll also be able to drill down into the decoded packets to see what kind of data these satellites are sending. Now mostly the information will be related to the status of the satellite itself, such as battery level, temperature, and any other data from specific sensors the satellite designers have incorporated. On your own online dashboard, you can also see a heat map, which will show you where each of the satellites you received were when you received a packet from them. This may help with antenna positioning, especially if you're only receiving satellites in a certain direction or above a certain elevation. I was quite surprised to receive some packets from satellites which were only just above one degree elevation facing northwest, but not many decoded packets from the south. However, this could be more related to the path in which the satellites are passing overhead or nearby, and not so much my antenna installation. Now, of course, you will need to think about the antenna. At 430 to 440 megahertz, you will not want to use cheap lossy coax if you have a long run. I myself use around 10 meters of RG213. I know it's not the best, but that goes from my shack to a dual band collinear antenna on the roof. My antenna is designed to be used on 70 centimeter handband, so it has a larger large bandwidth. Now, from looking at the satellites, you would have noticed that some satellites transmit at the lower portion of the 70 centimeter handband, as well as near the top. So that's nearly 10 megahertz in bandwidth. So how do we set up our LoRa boards to start receiving LoRa satellites and sending the decoded packets to TinyGS? Well, on their GitHub page, you'll find a list of supported LoRa boards. If you do not have one, I will leave a link in the description to the board that I use. The first thing that we need to do is upload the TinyGS firmware to the LoRa board. Luckily, they have created a one-click solution, especially for Windows. You just need to download the application from the GitHub page and then connect your LoRa board to your computer. As mentioned, I'm using Windows here, so if you're using Linux or Mac OS, then you'll just need to research further on how to load the firmware. Once the LoRa board is connected to your computer via USB cable, we need to take a look in the device configuration page to find the virtual COM port of the LoRa board. Once you have this, run the TinyGS uploader and select the correct COM port. 
Once selected, click the Upload Firmware button, sit back and wait for it to be loaded. Once finished, the LoRa board will reboot and on the OLED display, an IP address will be shown. So at this point, you will need to change your computer's Wi-Fi and connect to the LoRa board directly by locating the tiny GS Wi-Fi SSID. Once connected, simply type in the IP address into a web browser and you'll be presented with a configuration page. Now, before you go any further, you will need to register on the tiny GS Telegram room. This is quite easy to do. Just download the Telegram app onto your phone and then click the join button located on the tiny GS GitHub page or website. Once joined, you'll be able to request a username and password for the MQTT, which is the database tiny GS uses for all of the satellite and packet storage. Also on the system configuration page, we can now tell it to join our local Wi-Fi network by typing in the Wi-Fi SSD and password. Adding a verified LAT and long will ensure that your tiny GS automatically changes frequency for the nearest satellite as it approaches your location. So if you don't have your correct latitude and longitude set, then it's highly likely that you'll not receive any packets from satellites as your LoRa board will not be set correctly, most likely not even on the right frequency. The board config settings should actually be automatic, but if for some reason the TinyGS firmware did not detect your board, then you can choose it from a drop down list. The TinyGS firmware also has the ability to transmit. However, only have this ticked if you have a valid amateur radio license that allows you to transmit on the 70 centimeter handband. Although at present the transmit feature is just for testing, in the past there were satellites which relayed LoRa packets. I'm personally hoping that we see something similar soon as I think it'd be rather cool to be able to chat or send messages to other ham radio operators through these CubeSats using LoRa. Now, once you've finished the configuration, just click apply. The LoRa board will now disconnect from your computer and it will then connect to your home Wi-Fi. You can still access the dashboard of the LoRa board by typing the IP address, which is now shown on the OLED, into the browser on a computer on your local network. Now this dashboard will prove to be extremely useful as it will show the status of the LoRa board and whether or not it's connected to the MQTT server. As well as detailing any satellites that have been received in decoded packets, it will also show any errors. Now over the past few days, I've seen quite a few CRC errors, which I believe relate to the packet not being decoded properly or a packet was attempted to be decoded, but it was incomplete, hence the CRC error. Also on the dashboard, we find the current modem configuration. This will be the satellite that the LoRa board is waiting to receive. It even shows the frequency at which it is set the LoRa board to. Information on the last packet received is also shown on this dashboard. This is particularly useful because at a glance, you can see if the station was actually working correctly on the latest satellite pass. Now there's lots of information that you can go ahead and view, whether it's the online dashboard or your local dashboard, but there's definitely everything that you need to know whether it's working or not. Well, there we go, guys. That's an overview of how to configure your LoRa board to work with tiny GS firmware. Until the next video, stay safe, take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.